Hola, in this video I'm going to show you how I made my first game in a month and a half using Unreal Engine 5. And I published the game on itch.io. You don't believe me? Look, the button works. Oh my god, it actually worked. Every dev YouTuber says that your first game will suck. First game should be crap. And you need to get over it. Finish your game. I know people get into game development because they have an amazing idea of a perfect game they want to make. But it's true. I think the essence here is that you need to learn what you are doing. You need to be aware of all the skills necessary to make games so you can scope things better the next time and the good thing is you don't need to learn that much stuff just unreal blender photoshop marketing internet browsing patient to watch tutorials modeling texturing rigging skinning animating uv mapping sculpting retopology blueprinting material lighting particle effects camera post processing game design architecture level design sound design music visual effects ui optimization drawing painting color theory composition world building style video editing TikTok, TikTok, Oh, um, that was a lot. I had to learn so much to complete this project. I didn't know how much space my brain had left to learn more. I watched this course about fundamentals of blueprints because remember, I'm not a programmer, I'm a concept artist. I was watching a dev blog by Pontypants and he recommended to take this course on Udemy called Unreal Engine Blueprint Game Developer. It's really good. What I like about it is that they give you a small quiz to do on each lesson to test if you're learning what they are teaching. And I was like, easy, one plus one equals two. And then they asked, hey, what is one plus one? Uh, all right, all right, let me see. Uh... You work on different prototypes with this course. And one that I like is this one. I decided to use it as a jumpstart to make my game. I created three levels with this simple game and show it to my friends. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh. mira, mira, mira. Gaming. <laughs> They couldn't run the game properly. I think they were using some potatoes. But I learned the valuable lesson of playtesting. I feel like I was learning so much by just watching them play the game and telling me how much they love hate it. Something I noticed is that I wanted to make a slower puzzle-like game and they wanted to speed run the game and go as fast as you can. Brrr. So they were getting pretty impatient when the game forces you to stop and go slower. Seeing my friends playing the game gave me the motivation to complete this project so I could learn all the steps necessary to release quote unquote a real game. I was like, all right, I will make 10 levels. I decided to plan out my game using Notion. Here's how the layout of the project looked. So here I made a chronogramma that I divided into weeks. And in each week there was a trailer like world of all the tasks I needed to do in that week. Each board had a specific skill set in mind. I did everything in steps. Week one was for concept art. Week two was for modeling and materials. Week three was for level design, etc., etc., etc. But before that, I needed to work on all the mechanics first, so I know what levels to make and what concepts I needed to do. I kept it really simple. The scope was really small. I made a few mechanics. I had a dash, jump pad, dash pad, Metroid bomb, magnetic field, orbs, and the tank counter. I started with the dash. I used a very simple error indicator. I change the rotation of the arrow with my inputs and the ball dashes to whatever the rotation of the arrow is at the moment. It took me years to come up with this. I added some camera effects and some particles and boom, done. After that, I work on the jump pad mechanic. I had this issue where if the player was already in the air and touched the jump pad, it wouldn't bounce again. But eventually I figured it out. At this point, I was feeling optimistic. I was doing it. I had an idea and I could find a way to make it work. I started experimenting with the bomb ability that I copy paste from Metroid. I added some particle effects and bam! For some reason, I couldn't limit the number of bombs you could spawn at a certain amount of time. But I was like, this is a problem for future me. At this point, I was feeling happy about the movement options in the game and how I could combine the bomb with the dash and jump pad to do some speed running things like a real game and then i started learning a little bit about particle effect Ooh, look at this look at this i want more particles more i was like maybe the character is a blob of particles that can be cool right side note i also added a visual indicator so you know when you can dash as you can see i had trouble making it so the particles follow the character VFX are a very complex subject to learn and I gave up on that idea. And because of that, I tried a lot of different things for the character. Maybe it was just light and maybe you are the sun. It's blender time. I saw this video and I started modeling some sci-fi spheres. Here is how it looks in the game. But the problem I had with this design is that it did a poor job at portraying the rotation of the ball. The light pattern was too random and made it difficult to understand how fast the ball was moving visually. I did some more tests and nothing seems to work. But wait, I'm an artist, right? I should 
should be able to design this. So I came up with these sketches. I also started paying more attention to my schedule. So week one was all about concept art. So I drew everything in a week. The ball, the jump pad, the floor that I never use, the walls, the cannon, and the magnet. Okay, back to the ball. And it's ready. I, I did it, I modeled it. The magnets too, everything. Everything is ready, all, everything, total. Check out. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell yeah, no, Listen, I can man. explain. I can explain. Maybe this one, or this one, or this one, or this one, or this one. What happened if I get in here? Oh, yeah. And here is me placing the cannons. I started replacing the placeholder assets with the real models. Magnetic field? Is that how it works? What is that? Is that bold poop? There must be an easy way to do this. I remember having a hard time programming the magnetic fields. I had a repel and a attract magnet. Repel being the one that I end up using the most. I started experimenting with geometry nodes in blender for the background of the game geometry nodes are really cool i wish to learn more about it but i know that if i learn how to do something right now i will forget it and with unreal procedural content generation tools i don't know which one i should focus on the ideal case would be both right i get distracted with blender so easily <laughs> what am i doing here something i love about blender is the modifiers there's no way someone can create this by hand all right i created a bunch of cubes look at them they are so cute all right, let's see how it looks. Wait, you don't need to jump. You can make this game. You can do this. No, no, no. Cubes. Uh-huh, those are cubes. Yep, cubes in the background. Let's go. I started playing with some atmosphere and camera effects. Thanks to your sandbox YouTube channel, check it out. Here I added some traumatic aberration when you dash. I started working on the level prototypes using the cube grid tool. Here is the first variation of this level. Oh yeah, I mean this moving platform using the inter to movement component. For anything that you need to move back and forward, use that. I think it's very performance efficient. It took me a while to nail down the speed and fire rate of this one. I wanted to see how the game was running and I sent it to my friends. As you can see, I wanted to die inside. It was a disaster. It was so slow, and they had to downscale the resolution of their monitors to play it. Even though it was hard, I learned a lot by just watching them play the game. This area was too hard to be on the second level. I end up changing this part and testing different configurations to make it work. They will also die here a lot, and everyone seems to hate backtracking. Yeah, I need to fix this. Why are we still here? Just to suffer? <laughs> This was by far my favorite level design idea. You will have to play it to see what I mean. Hey, look at this level. Nothing crazy is going to happen. Okay, I need to add sounds to my game. Can't rely on babies crying in the background of my house. Sound design. All right. Okay, I need to work on the sound design of the game, but I have no idea where to start. I have no idea how people make sound. At the beginning, I was like, okay, let's find some free sounds that I could use, but it was really hard to find something that I like. and decided to learn how to do it myself. I went into YouTube and found this. In this video, Jonas was using Audacity to make sounds, but he had a professional sound designer using another program called Reaper. And I was like, ooh, Reaper, that's a cool name. Maybe I should use that. I was looking around some good Reaper tutorials and I found this channel by the sound designer of Hyper Life Drifter. <laughs> And I was like, ooh, this is legit. I should learn from this guy. So I watched his Reaper tutorials and I started working from there. The basic idea is that you find a library of sounds that you can use. In this case, I got the free library from GDC Free Sounds. And the fun part is, is that if you don't find the specific sound that you're looking for, you can record it yourself. All right, follow, all right, come uh, along. What about this one? Add some rocks to the mix. So sound design is something like this. You have a piece of bread, this one, and then you put another piece of bread on top of it. So you layer the bread. That's basically what you do in sound design. You have to layer each sound is something different. Now you have to layer the foam, for example. And then you have to keep layering. At the end, you have a really cool sound effect. I'm not gonna eat this, right? Here's an example.
And that's it. That's how you make towns. Of course, there is a lot more than that. Sound design is an art form that takes a lot of time and effort to learn. And I actually really like doing the sound design of the game. I did this one that I don't even need for the game, but I did it because I was having fun making sounds. Sound effects made things feel so much better. I cut the level from 10 to 7 because I wanted to finish the game quickly. For the UI, I watched these tutorials. For the music of the game, I found this channel on YouTube. He releases music that everyone can use on their project. For the VFX, I watched this tutorial. Here is how it looks in the game. I also added a post-processing effect that made the game look so much better. I made a main menu, I made a trailer, and uploaded the game to each.io. You can play it for free. Let me know what you think. This felt really validating. I know that I still have a lot of things to Learn. but this project gave me a sense of confidence that I could learn to make games and that I just need to put in the time and effort to do it and to take it a step by step so I don't feel overwhelmed. Another thing I learned is that in order to be motivated to finish a game I need to have a really cool idea I'm excited about. In this case I was desperate to finish it because I didn't think the idea of a bowling game was particularly interesting so I didn't want to spend more time polishing it and designing levels. That's why for my next project I took some time to really think about what I wanted to make and now I have an idea that I'm really excited to work on for the next few years. If you follow me on Twitter or threads, you have some clues into what the game is going to be about. I can't wait to show you more about it. Thanks for watching and subscribe if you want to follow my game development journey. I did it. I'm officially a game developer now.